This is every cybersecurity job explained in 10 minutes. So whether you're just starting out in cybersecurity or are already working in cybersecurity and are looking to do a career switch, hopefully this video can be helpful in terms of helping you decide what your next career step is based on the seven cybersecurity jobs. Number one on this list is an SOC analyst. So this is one of the most entry-level cybersecurity roles out there. As an SOC analyst, your job is to monitor alerts, logs, and dashboards for any suspicious activity on the network. This could be automated alerts that the cybersecurity team sets up on an SIEM or a SIEM, but it could also be user-submitted alerts, whether it be from a ticketing dashboard or through email. But typically, as an SOC analyst, you are the first responder when a cyber attack happens. Depending on the company you work for and the field that you're in, this role can be called an SOC analyst analyst or a security analyst. And while they generally perform the same thing, an SOC analyst is someone who is typically always on the defensive security side or the blue team, while a security analyst can also be an SOC analyst, but they can also be someone on the cybersecurity team that performs more general tasks that are more early and mid-career. Now, this also means you'll get to work with a lot of different cybersecurity tools across the board as a first line of defense, which means if something does happen that triggers an alert, your job is to look through the suspicious activity, any suspicious logs, decide whether it's a true positive or a false positive, Positive. And if it's a true positive, then typically you would escalate this to the next level of the SOC, which are typically going to be the incident responders. Okay, so as an incident responder, your job is to investigate breaches and determine what actually happened. This also means a lot of documentation, a lot of digging through the original evidence and logs that the SOC analyst or the first line of defense had sent to you. Your job is also to contain the threats and help prevent repeat attacks. Now, this also means that this is a very high pressure role with a real world impact. When you hear about the cybersecurity team, that are constantly on call, constantly dealing with incidents and putting out fires, it's typically the SOC analysts and the incident responders, even more so for incident responders, because you can get a call at 4 a.m. in the morning, you can get a call at 10 a.m. on a Saturday, and if you're on call, then you're expected to be fighting those fires and being on the bridge lines for those incidents when they happen. And this can definitely be an extremely stressful job, but it is also very fulfilling considering that you're actually preventing cyber attacks in the real world. And if you're interested in defensive security, becoming an SOC analyst or an incident responder are typically going to be the most popular roles. But on the complete opposite end of the blue team, you have the red team, and this includes pen testers and ethical hackers. These are the cybersecurity professionals who simulate cyber attacks to find weaknesses in software and hardware on a network before cyber criminals do. Pen testers, I would say, are the most savvy in terms of using different tools and technologies because there are so many different pen testing tools out there that do different things. But a lot of them, if they are paid, then they have community editions, which are free editions that anyone can use to practice. Burp Suite is a good example of this. I always recommend the Burp Suite community edition because this is great for students who are just learning to do their red team assessments and penetration tests. Now, as a pen tester, it is also very helpful to know coding skills. This is another reason why a lot of pen testers typically come from different backgrounds and a popular background is coding or any role in tech where you have some previous coding or scripting background because as a pen tester or an ethical hacker, oftentimes you could also be writing your own scripts or even just looking through the code of an application. JavaScript or Python are really good languages to learn if you're interested in pen testing. Honestly, any scripting language would be really helpful, but this role is a bit less entry level compared to SOC analysts and the blue team roles and typically requires strong technical skills and, and also some creative thinking because your job is basically trying to think like an attacker, what an attacker would try to exploit, what it would try to take advantage of, what are the potential ways into an application, to a network, and using whatever tools are at your disposal to be able to find those entry points or vulnerabilities or weaknesses and exploit them before a real attacker does. And personally myself, as someone who has worked as an SOC analyst, but also as a junior pen tester and in GRC. And yes, I'm really grateful to have had experiences in all these roles so I can actively talk about them based on my experience. But red teamers are some of the most creative cybersecurity professionals you have ever met. And there is a reason why a certain type of person excels very well in a red team role. It's usually the ones who think outside of the box, think very creatively, and are very good at following their hunches or gut feelings when it comes to trying to find expert weaknesses in an application. As a cybersecurity professional, my inbox is basically my second brain. It's where incident updates come in, stakeholders ask for answers, vendors send security alerts, and leadership wants decisions fast. If I miss something in my inbox, it's not just inconvenient, it can actually become a risk. But the worst is coming back after a holiday break. Hundreds of emails, threads everywhere, action items buried, 
and that constant feeling of being behind before the year even really starts. That's why I started using Superhuman Mail. It's the system that helps me stay ahead all year instead of playing inbox catch up. Superhuman Mail's AI helps me move through email fast by automatically organizing my inbox so I can reset, plan my day, and reclaim my time. Let me show you how I actually use it in my workflow. This is split inbox. And honestly, this is where the relief kicks in. Instead of one overwhelming list, my inbox is automatically separated into what needs my attention now versus everything else. Security incidents, leadership emails, and urgent client messages are front and center, while newsletters and low priority threads stay out of the way. The other feature I rely on is auto drafts. This keeps my work moving forward even when my day is packed. Superhuman Mail drafts responses for me based on the context of the conversation. So I'm not starting from a blank screen every time. I review, make small edits, and move on in seconds. That means faster responses, smoother follow-ups, and more energy for the work that's important. If your inbox feels like it's running you instead of the other way around, this completely changes how you work. Start the year sharper, calmer, and ready to move faster than ever. Download Superhuman Mail today. All right, the fourth role on this list is a security engineer. Security engineers design and build secure systems and infrastructure. This means implementing tools like firewalls, SIMs, EDR, and IAM. And this role is a lot more hands-on engineering compared to just monitoring alerts like a security analyst. So if you think about it this way, a security analyst or an SOC analyst will use the tools that the security engineer is building, maintaining, upgrading, designing, etc. This is a much more technical role. And I would say if you're someone who is interested in infrastructure, and system design and how the whole big picture works, not just at an application level, but at the network level, at the company-wide level, how the tools, hardware, applications work together, then a security engineer is a great role for you if you like the technical side of things. Now, because of the breadth of impact that your job has, this also means that you'll be working with a lot of different teams. Security engineers work closely with IT, software engineering teams, DevOps teams, cloud teams to secure systems by design. Because when you're designing systems at a large scale like this, then you also need the inputs of the users and applications that will be running on that infrastructure. But that doesn't mean that you can just work in a vacuum, build something and put it out there. You need input from various different teams. You need input from the technical folks, the non-technical folks. So security engineers do a lot of technical work, but they'll also need a lot of soft skills because you're also dealing with stakeholders and inputs and opinions from other teams that you have to consider when you're building and making decisions on infrastructure design. Now, security engineers could also be pulled into different security incidents from the SOC team. If there are complex alerts that need their expertise, you might also be writing scripts for certain automations for security workflows, configuring or setting up cybersecurity tooling. So there's a lot that goes into security engineering, which brings us to the next role on this list, which is a cloud security engineer. Now think of everything I just said and frame it with cloud security. This can be very different depending on the companies that you work at, but typically cloud security engineers do the same thing that security engineers do, but specifically on cloud infrastructure. This includes securing applications, infrastructure, software on one or multiple cloud environments. But when it comes to cloud security engineering, a lot of your focus is going to be on misconfigurations, identity, and access controls. Basically securing users, data, and applications in the cloud and making sure that the only people who have access to certain data or applications on the cloud are those who actually need it. Making sure that the cloud security baseline is aligned with your company's security standards. And of course, if your company has a hybrid cloud, which means they use their own on-prem data centers and they also use cloud infrastructure, making sure that those identity and access controls align. This is one of the roles in tech that are highly in demand right now since most companies are moving to the cloud and are ditching on-prem data centers since in general, it is more expensive to maintain your own data center. It is also very expensive to host your own cloud environment. So most companies are moving towards cloud or at least hybrid cloud environments, which also means that cloud security engineers, cloud analysts, anything in the cloud space are typically going to be very hot topics right now for hiring, especially in cybersecurity. All right, cybersecurity job number six on this list is a GRC analyst. GRC stands for governance, risk, and compliance. Your job is to manage policies, risk assessments, and compliance audits while working closely with legal leadership and auditors, whether they're external or internal, on making sure that your security program aligns with certain national or international standards like the ISO 27001 or SOC 2 Type 2, HIPAA, PCI, there are lots of different standards, regulations, certifications out there. And GRC is another one of those jobs that are highly in demand for cybersecurity because of the fact that the AI boom has really sped up the creation of new companies, of new tech tools, of new applications. And one of the main things that companies have to worry about is whether or not they are securing data, their users, their applications to meet a certain standard so that their customers and their users can actually trust them. This is the reason why companies get certifications and go through audits in the first place because they want that completed badge or certification or audit 
audit report and we met these standards so that is why you can trust us with your data and in a world where privacy is becoming more and more important and relevant to the everyday user considering all of our information is online nowadays GRC is very very important and i'll also say that if you're someone who is non-technical and interested in cybersecurity, GRC analyst is one of the best roles for you because it's less technical but more strategy and communications based so that doesn't mean that you'll never see anything technical or never have to speak to a technical audience but for the most part you won't be deep in the weeds compared to other cybersecurity roles that do require hands-on technical skills. GRC is one of the few non-technical cybersecurity roles that is still a really hot area that's hiring. All right, and finally, the last job on this list is a security architect. So as a security architect, your job is to design an organization's overall security strategy. This means choosing tools, frameworks, and defensive models to best keep your organization secure. Now, this is even more high level and senior than a security engineer. And security architects are a relatively senior level role, and your job is to basically build the vision forward for your cybersecurity program. Now, if we use an example comparing security architects to security engineers, the security architect will decide the specific security model that the company will be following. For example, they could be deciding that from now on, the company is going to focus on zero trust. This means never trust always verify. So no user, device, or application is trusted by default, even if they're already inside the network perimeter. Now, as you can imagine, this is a very, very big architectural change if you're a company that currently doesn't follow the zero trust security framework. And now a security engineer will come in and build out exactly what this will look like, what tools are needed, what checkpoints, and working closely with the security architect to make sure that everything aligns with the big picture. And that's how these two roles work together, of course, with other inputs from different teams, because at the end of the day, cybersecurity is a team effort. All it takes is one way in, and that is why there are so many different cybersecurity roles there to protect different parts of the application, of the network, of your organization as a whole. All right, so hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I know I've been taking a bit of a break from this channel, and I'm really glad to... I guess be back on it. Um, it's been a very busy few months as I've been focusing on a lot more content on platforms like LinkedIn and Instagram, which by the way, are all linked in my description if you want to follow along. I typically make a lot more real-time posts on there. So I would love to have you follow along. Let me know if there are any other video topics you would like to see from me as I'm getting back into the swing of things on this channel. And I really appreciate your patience with me. There's going to be a lot more exciting things coming this year in 2026. And I'm so excited to share them with you guys. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!